Greetings and thank you for tuning in to the filling station. This week we talked about standing. The hardest thing to do today is to be a Christian. Can you stand on what you believe or will you be shaken by the wind? Tune in and be blessed. Come on, stand on the healing. Stand on his love. Come on. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Come on, sometimes we can only stand on that act of love right there. When somebody, when somebody shows us love, oh, sometimes when we, when we grow up, we don't understand what love is. Sometimes we, we get it perverted. We, we mix lust with love, and then we, we fall in lust with somebody and think that it's love, and we don't truly see what love is. But God said, I want you to stand on my love. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, he said, I want you to stand on my love, man of God. I want you to stand on my love, woman of God. I want you to know that I am here to heal your hearts. I want you to know that I'm here to heal your souls. You just have to let me in. Come on, sometimes we don't let him in, we just go. We just go. And we just go. And we just go. And we're always moving, but he said, when... Are we standing? Come on, because you have to get a firm foundation to be able to stand. Come on, when, when, when you when you look at and when you look at, I, I'm gonna give you this example. When you look at a center in basketball, when he's playing defense, his main objective is to stop anybody from just running into the lane. Come on, he has to get into a stance. Come on, maybe it's a two-three, maybe it's a three-two, maybe it's a zone, a half-court trap. You know, he got everybody else on his team. He got the power forward. He got the small forward. Come on. In the name of Jesus. He got the power forward. He got the shooting guard. And he also got the point guard. Come on. Each, everybody has an assignment. Somebody's assignment might be out there on that three-point line. Somebody's assignment might be mid-court. But his assignment is to stand in the middle or stand there and block. You know, he's the last resort. If anybody makes it past him, then the assignment was failed. Come on, he's got to stand in there and he knows he has to practice. He has to practice and be able to be that big man because he knows some people are going to try to come and body him. Come on, y'all seen Michael Jordan and LeBron James? When they come in, they come in with some steam. They come in with some weight. And then that, that center's job is to come in and block that ball or when they miss it, get the rebound, turn around. And now he's in his stance to figure out who needs to take the ball to the court. And then he don't, that assignment don't finish right there. When he gets down to the other side of the court, he needs to be under the basket again. So his job is to secure the prize. His job is just to secure the prize Someone so the rest of the team can put the ball into the... If it do come to him, then he puts it back. But if he grabs the ball and sees there's too many people around him, what he do? He kick it back out and they let him reel. So come on, everybody, you got to stand. In the midst of turmoil, in the midst of grief, in the midst of troubles, in the midst of everything. We got to stand. That's in 1 Corinthians um, 15 and 58. I'm sorry. I thought I said the end. Come on, this is the key scripture right here. 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Come on. Immovable. Always abundant, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Come on. The, the, this is my part right here. Where This is what gave me joy right here. Steadfast and immovable. Come on. When you got somebody in a defensive line or an offensive line, their job is to be immovable. Come on, that center is supposed to protect that quarterback. He's supposed to be immovable. That left tackle, that right tackle, that left guard, they're supposed to be immovable. You have to anchor yourself in the word. You have to anchor yourself in the spirit. You have to anchor yourself in the things of God. Come on. Sometimes we always, because he, he told me this, he said, sometimes we forget the promise. Come on, I know I, know I forgot the promise at one point. He said, sometimes we forget the promise. And come on, the promise can anchor us. Come on. The promise can anchor us because when he says, Justin, I'm going to take you to tour the world. I'm going to take you to play. And then when you play, demons will come out. When, when you play, people will be able to get delivered. When you play, people will be able to sing from the heavens.
it's because of the tomb that I give you from heaven. Come on, if that's a promise, come on. And then you have to hold on to that promise, although it don't seem like it's going to happen sometimes. Come on, I know because I just rap and I just rap and I just rap and I keep on writing songs and keep on making beats. And I'm like, God, I got two or three hundred beats. I got two or three hundred songs. When? In the perfect time, but you just got to stay. Come on, it don't matter what hit you, if the wave of the wave of, of, of storm hits you in your life, or financial burdens, if the wave of grief hits you, if the wave of, of, of sin, come on, because we can get into waves of sin, yeah. hit you, you got to be able to stand on his word. Come on, whenever you, I'm going to put it like this, if you see a dam, what is the dam's job to do? Stop the water, but that don't mean that the water stops. That don't mean that the water stops. Come on, because that water is constantly moving, crashing across the dam. Come on, we can look at Hoover Dam. That dam has been standing for a long time, and the water continues to crash against it. But it stays steadfast and immovable to this assignment. Because if Hoover Dam broke, California won't have no power. Come on, we don't even really use that much power from Hoover Dam. That, that Los, Nevada uses that to, to get money off, off California. We generate those, those generators. Come on. If that falls, then you have the whole state in trouble. Come on. It's, it's, it's an assignment that happens. Come on. I was, watching, I was watching the game last night with the Golden State Warriors. 71 and, and 9. Come on. They're about to break the Bulls record. They got two more games. That's what they say. They got San Antonio today, though. But but last night I saw the center. His whole team was down by 10. Right? Golden State's down by 10. And what did he do? He rallied and he made sure that he got the blocks, he got the rebounds. Even though got a bounds. Come on, like old Dennis Rodman. Come on. Dennis Rodman used to dive out to get the ball because that was his assignment. I'm here to get you where you need to be. I'm not here to score much. I'm here to get you the ball, Jordan. I'm here to get you the ball, Scotty Pippen. Come on, we got to know our lanes that we walk in. We can't just be walking around trying to stand in other people's lanes because you're going to get moved. You got to understand where you need to stand. Come on, sometimes we stand in error, thinking we're going to be singers, thinking we're going to be this, thinking we're going to be that, thinking we're going to be preachers. Everybody's not supposed to preach. Everybody's not supposed to sing. Everybody's not supposed to praise dance. Come on. All right. You got to know where you're supposed to stand. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 1. You got to know where you're going to stand. Because God can't anchor you in something that's not for you. He can't, he can't anchor you in something that's not for you. I'm not supposed to go and play volleyball. And I would be insane to think I'm supposed to run around and go play volleyball. That at the park, maybe on a fun day, maybe a picnic. Yes, I might serve a couple times. But I'm not about to dedicate my life to try to play volleyball. That's not me. The ankles ain't gonna hold up. I can't stand in that. I can't stand in that. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand firm. I can't plant my roots. Come on. Standing, you have to plant roots. That means that you have to invest time in seeds. That means you have to invest time in money. That means you have to invest your life. Because whenever something is standing firm, come on, let's take it as a tree. You know, sometimes the tree might look like it's real little, but those roots go down hundreds of feet. Because they know that, they, that each piece has an anchor part. Let's go to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Come on, we talked about the sacrifice last week. Now that you know about the sacrifice, now that you know about the blood, I need you to stand for it. I need you to stand in it. Yeah. Come on. We should always have the bloodstained banner. I understand it's hard sometimes. Sometimes I don't want to wake up and pray. Sometimes I don't want to wake up and read. Sometimes I don't even want to wake up. I just want to lay. Come on. But you, but you got to kick your body into motion and say, what am I standing for today? Come on. I heard uh, uh, Sting, my favorite wrestler, he said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. That's it. Come on. And that's the truth. That's the truth. If you have no identity in who you are, you will become what your environment produces. Come on, how many know some people that, man, I thought you, wait a minute, last week, what, 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 how come, you don't stand in nothing. Come on, wishy-washy, just going with the wave. Come on, that's the way the church is today, just going with the wave. We got to be cool. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to, because everybody going to come in. Everybody going to come in because, like I said last week, you don't have the atonement. Come on, we have to switch bodies. Amen. We 
We got to stand. Come on. Galatians 5, let's go back. Stand fast, therefore, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again. Again. Come on. They should have put a comma right there. Because that's a that's a pause moment. Screw the bottom off and hit off. That, that's a pause. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. With the yoke. Do not be entangled with the, come on, because we can get back entangled. We can stand and then we can move and think that we still standing. We got to understand what, bond, what, what, what bondage is coming for. We got to understand what comes for our heart. We got to understand what's coming for our minds so that we don't be entangled with the yoke again. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that in that he is a debtor of debtor of who of those who keep the law. You have become in, in estranged from Christ. You will attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. You gotta be circumcised. You gotta stand in, in, in what you believe in. Come on. You got to stay, that Christ said that, 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 that I have come that you have life more abundantly. But if we don't stand in the abundance, then we can't have the life that he wants us to have. Come on, if we don't stand in the belief of who he is, I know sometimes that, that, that we look and we say, Lord, I just can't take no more. Come on, that, and I believe that's where God always wants us. Because if you, if you get to that point to where, you know, I done took this, I done took that, I just can't take no more, it makes you reflect on God. Come on. It makes you reflect on who he is because you say, you know what, well, I can't do it. It eliminates self because when you say, I can't take no more, that means I physically cannot go on with what's happening. So, Lord, I need each and every bit of your help. So I'm standing here. In, in the need of prayer. I'm standing here needing you to move on behalf of me. I'm standing here needing you to move on behalf of my family. I'm standing here needing you, oh God, because I cannot move anymore. But if you give me the strength, if you give me the comfort, I can move forward. If you give me the air, I can breathe again. Come on, how many people pray like that? If you give me the air, I can breathe again, God, because I can't breathe without you. I can't breathe without you, God. I can't move without you. I can't even brush my teeth without you, God. I can't wake up and go to sleep without you. I can't be who I am without you. Because if you make me mad, I'm going to cut somebody out. Come on. I need you, oh God. I need you, oh God. To move on my behalf. First Corinthians 16 and 13. Come on, we're gonna move around today. First Corinthians 16 and 13. Come on, I'm here to encourage today because I know that God said stand and, and we've been getting hit right and left. 16 and 13. Yeah. First Corinthians 16. Verses 13. Watch. Somebody read it for me. Come on, you're not old school. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Oh, uh, 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 stand fast in the faith. Watch ye. Come on, he, he warned you first. Before he said stand, he said watch. Keep, keep going. With you, like men, be strong. But all your things be done with charity. Come on. How many do we see with the charity of the Lord? But did you see what he said? He said, watch. Then he said, stand. Come on. Look, look, look at the revelation that he said, watch. Then he said, stand. Because if you just stand in idol, anything can hit you. Come on. If you're not paying attention, you, 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 you can get hit by any. Thing. Come on. But he yeah. said, watch. Because when you watch you, you 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 put the weight in the right places of your feet. Come on. You put the you put the weight in the right places of your core. Come on. 
if you watch, you can be like, okay, they're going to come from this way, or, or they can come from, come on, I need you to stand so you can see what's going on in your life. Come on. And we just live and live and live sometimes. We just go with the ways of the day, with the, with the waves. Come on. You're not standing if you're moving with the waves. We just do whatever, you know, love and hip hop. All of these other foolish shows that we do, come on, we take on their personalities and think that we divas and, and, and different things. Walking around, talking to people. Well, girl, what I said yesterday, mm, I wish she would. Wait a minute, you didn't act like that before you start watching this foolishness? That's not even real. They call it reality TV, but it's all scripted. I'm sure it is. It's all scripted. We, and, and we just, we watching the wrong thing. So when, you, when it's time to stand, the church is getting hit. Sure Your life is getting hit. Your friends is getting hit. Your family's getting hit. And they said, well, I thought you went to church and you don't never have no answers for me. How is it that, 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 that we as the body can, can't, uh, when somebody challenges us, we say, well, you know, blessing, highly favored, I'm just going to pray about it. What, what you going to pray about? They came to you for the answer. But you're not standing on the gospel. We're not standing on this. We don't know it. So that's why we have to deviate from, from communicating to people. Come on. There's sinners out here that know the Bible better than some of us. Yeah. Come on. Well, if the word says this, then why do you act like that? Come on. How many have been challenged like that before? I know I have. Somebody said something. I said, whoops. They done got me. Come on. I felt, I felt horrible. Because they said, I looked, up to, to, I looked up to you until today. Come on, that's, that's harsh. When, when somebody challenges you and you're supposed to be the same one. Ain't standing on nothing, falling for everything. And they said, well, if, if, if you've been to church for this long and you don't have no answers for me, then why do I need to come? You ain't standing about nothing. You just live in the fantasy of being a Christian. You like the idea of being saved. You don't want to be saved. Come on, that's, that's where a lot of people in church is today. They don't stand on who God is because they don't know who God is. Because they don't take the time to find out who God is. So they fall in love with the idealism, the ideals of Christian. Come on, remember that last week? Church marketing, church marketing has drawn them in. And they have begun to believe the foolish. Come on, let's go to Matthew 24 and 13. Well, let's jump up to 3. But, but yeah, Matthew 24. Come on. I'm going to read 13, then I'm going to jump back up so y'all can see this. It says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Come on, what was, what, was, what was he talking about? It says, now he sat on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him privately, saying, tell us, when, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Come on, they had some, ans they had some questions that they wanted to answer. Yeah. They had some questions that they wanted to answer. And we reread re this as Christians and just don't even pay attention to what Jesus was saying to them. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. Come on, I see a lot of that happening now. You can't stand if you've been deceived. You weren't standing if you were deceived. Come on. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass by the end. Is not, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be families, pest, I mean, famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All of these things are the beginning of sorrows. Come on, you have to prepare them and let them know. This is the beginning of sorrow, so I need you to be able to stand so I can comfort you in the midst of this. So I can comfort you in the midst of famines. So I can comfort you in the midst of pestilences. Come on, how many have seen the, 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 the famines take the land? And it's, they're not just talking about sickness. They're talking about just famines altogether. There's the famines of the mind. Come on, we become more savage. We become more savage these days. Famines of the heart. There is no love. Come on. And then we want to pervert it and come with the gay thing and talk about love is everywhere. Come on. We got the rainbow and we, and we love one. Love didn't win. Perversion won that day in the courts. 
But who wins the battle? God. Come on. It says it right here. Famines and pestilence. Come on. That's old pestilence. And earthquakes in various places. Come on. We had earthquake here. It was north. But it tore up the spaghetti bowl. And they had to, they had to uh, uh, just the aftershocks. Come on. It was serious. Las Vegas don't have no, no earthquakes. But we had a little earthquake. Come on. I was sitting in my living room thinking Terry was playing with the chair. I was like, why is Terry messing with my chair? And I was like, Terry, he upstairs asleep. I said, okay, that was an earthquake. Come on. Come on, earthquakes in various places, and these are the beginning. Come on, that's not the end. That's not the middle. That's the beginning. Then they will deliver you up for tribulation and kill you, and, they, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another. Come on, we see this happening day by day, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Come on, back right there in the beginning where he says, uh, take heed that no one deceives you. But then he went back and said that prophets will rise up and deceive. Why did you think he said prophets will rise up? Come on, oh, oh, soothsayers and and and, and oh, uh, psychics. Come on, how many have seen that California psychic commercial? You guaranteed money back, guaranteed. You'll have the best reading from the California. Come on, prophets will raise up. Come on, and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, come on, heartlessness, lewdness, come on, sin, the nature of man, the love of many will grow cold. Come on, somebody will say wax cold. Come on, come on, everybody know when wax is cold, it don't, it is formed. Come on, when wax is cold, it's formed. When it's hot, it runs down the candle or whatever you have it in. Come on, we got the little, the little wax things with the scent. But when it's, when it's, when it's cold, when it's hard, come on, and that, they talking about the heart. They talk about the mind, and many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. I need you to stand because I can't have you have a cold heart. Come on, sin gives you a cold heart. Come on, lawlessness, come on, it says it right there, gives you a cold heart. When you're lawless, you're just untamed. Come on, how many of us was wild? I know I was wild. Oh, Bush baby. Come on. Come on. Wild. Just thinking, just just un, unclean, just unseen things. Just what you want to do. Come on, the old Mobley. Come on, Jungle Book. Just wild. Running with the just running with the vipers. Come on, we know everybody in here done ran somewhere. I mean, you might not have been out on the street, but you done ran with the vipers. Come on, you done ran with the wild. And sometimes when we get saved, we forget that we used to run with the wild, so we condemn the wild. Yeah. Come on. We, we, done, we done changed outfits. Come on. We took that little cloth off that we had. Yeah. Come on. And then we got a suit. And then we want to stand up and be like, I don't know what the wild is like. Because Come on, but you, you got to be able to, to, to go back to the wild. To, to understand. Come on, that will keep you standing because when you realize what you came from, when you realize what you lived in. Come on, I reflect on it every day. I was like, you know what? I was grinding. But I was like, I thank the Lord for the Lord. Come on. That was a revelation. Come on, I thank the Lord for the Lord. Come, I mean, because if it wasn't for Jesus, I would still be out there. Probably dead, though. Right, real talk. In somebody's graveyard. Gone. And then it says, and this is the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as the witness to all nations. And then, not until it's preached to all nations. Come on, it says, it, when it's preached to all, to all the world to witness to all nations, then the end will come. So, how many of us is preaching to all the nations? How many of us is getting the gospel out? I mean, because the end won't come until... To the, to the gospel of the kingdom is preached everywhere. How, how do we know that somebody in here ain't supposed to go to Kenya and preach the word? How do we know somebody ain't supposed to go and have China? Come on, go to one of them underground churches in China and deliver. Come on, and be able to speak the word. Have an old interpreter and you, ah! You know, come on, how many, I'm just saying, how many don't, you don't know? You don't know where God is going to take you. You might have an idea, but you don't know what you're going to do. Who says our YouTube channel won't end up having 100 million viewers next year? Yeah, or this 
Come on. Who says that, that, that each video won't be streamed? Come on and share it on websites so they can say, here is the gospel of the Lord. We got to be able to preach. We got to be able to stand on what we believe in. Come on, we we we, we too we too uh, folly. Come on, my mama say fickle, just fickle. Can't they can't never stand up for nothing because you're too fickle. Come on, that's the old southern just fickle. When you when when you trying to walk and you do something, well, you know he ain't gonna never be nothing because he just too fickle anyway. When he start or she start, they they just stop after a little while. They know, just watch and see. Come on, speak and dip on your situation because they know you don't know how to stand. Yeah. Stand firm. Come on, I like this one right here, Psalms one twelve. Come on, we gonna walk through the scripture. Come on, I like this Bible. This one be keeping me on my toes. Oh God, thank you for the Christmas present. Come on, love my father. Ain't ready. She know what to get you. She knows her sheep, cause she stands on the gospel. Come on, y'all don't know. She stands. She stands on the relationship. Come on. She stands on the friendship. Come on. We got. We got to learn how to do that too. We got to learn how to befriend people. Not everybody. Come on, not everybody is supposed to be your friend, but but there's still a love and kindness to go. Come on, that's the form of standing too. Love and kindness, being just gentle to somebody. You know what I'm saying? I went to Starbucks one day and paid for somebody's coffee behind me because the dude looked like he 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 had a little bit of change or something, and he was counting some. I was like, just put that on my Starbucks card. Come on, because I still got ten dollars. Come on, just put it, whatever he wants. Let him get it. He's like, oh, thank you. He only had enough change, and he was counting out change, not bills. And I was like, just put it on the card. Come on, love and kindness. And that's, they, he don't know that I'm preaching, but he knew that somebody cared enough to get him some coffee that morning, and it probably made his day better. Come on. Y'all, okay. 12, 12, 112 and 6. Come on, this will never be shaken. Come on. Surely he will, he will never be shaken. The righteous will be everlasting remembrance. Come on, what, what, what's the NIV say? Who got the NIV? Nobody got the NIV? Oh, you on the camera. Never mind. But I, I like what it is. Come on, surely he will never be shaken. Come on, never shaken. Let's go on to Proverbs 10. Come on, let's walk through the word real quick. I'm not going to be before you long. I'm just trying to encourage you today. How many is getting encouraged by this word to stand? Come on, because we need it. We need we need God to move on our behalf. We need God to, to, to move uh, uh, and be able to shake up some things. Come on, how many know that when God shakes some stuff and you stand and you still don't get affected by it? Come on, because yeah, you're yeah. standing in the middle of the storm. Oh, shut up. You're standing in the eye of the storm. So he can shake some stuff around you and change up some, some, some surroundings, change up some friends. Come on, change up some circumstances and you're still standing firm and you say, I'm standing in you, Lord, and look around because everything is changing and I'm coming out golden. I'm coming out spot free. I'm coming out blemish free because your blood is the what's covering me and I'm standing standing on the things that I know that you're going to do for me. I'm standing on the promises. I'm standing on my future. I'm standing on yeah. what you told me to stand on. Because if I don't stand for that, I'll fall. Come on. If, 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 if I had never went, when came back to church, I would have thought that the psychics was 100% accurate. Come on. I was fascinated by psychics when I was younger. And, and into the Zodiac and all that witchcraft. Come on, I used to try to study the Zodiac to manipulate people. Well, you're, what is your sign? Oh, okay. Right, we come Come on. Come on. I wasn't trying to make no money. I was making money selling drugs. I was trying to get, never mind, I'm not going to go there. Anyways, trying to be an old playboy. Anyways. Well, you know, this is what you like. Well, how do you know? Cause my, and then this is the thing. My mama had a big old Zodiac book. I don't know why she had that thing. It had all the signs in it, everything. Me and Tosh used to sit there and read it like it was just a dictionary. Where did you get this from? I mean, this thing was this thick, y'all. It was like that thick and about this wide. And I was just like, oh, this is nice. You know, I seen the little signs and the Zodiac people and the Geminis and the horsemen and all of them. And I thought, you know, I'm comic book graphics. So I'm going to read this because all the pages got pictures and stuff just get intertwined into some foolishness. Come on, standing for witchcraft. Then I was fascinated by psychics. And my mama used to call the psychic line. She's like, you know, they was right. And I thought prophets and psychics were the same thing. Well, they, in that case. they operated in the, 
But psychics operate off familiar spirits, and prophets operate off the spirit of the Lord. Come on. I bet you for psychics say they be a prophet. Okay. But but I, I used to think it was the same thing. I thought psychics went to church too. No. That's what I'm gonna say. I was confused. Come on. Didn't know. Just ignorant. I was a kid. You know that I seen somebody prophesy to somebody in church, and I heard somebody phone call prophesy, so I thought it was the same thing. You know, I thought it was the same thing. So we just got to be not deceived. Come on, because this is things that they try to push, like everything is okay. Like homosexuality and love is okay. Come on, that's the true love. Then what's the love before that? How we done survived all these centuries, and all of a sudden this is the only love? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the Super Bowl and all that foolishness. Come on, had all of them, them flowers and stuff. Because soon as soon as the dude, they zoomed in, and I seen them shoes, because he had on some Jordans with some rainbow colors. I said, oh, they about to hear the gaze. Here we go. I already knew that was finna happen. Because then he started running. He got little streamers on the side. Come on. No. Look, and some stuff going on. The drums had rainbows on them. They playing them. I was like, they suck anyway. I don't even want to hear them. Then they got the people with the little flowers. Come on, they pushed that agenda. And then, you know, they got the little, the, everybody got their own parade. And they, all this foolishness. <laughs> And then the thing that kills me, though, the thing that kills me, and it's, and it's not the, the, the stuff that the gay people do at the convention, it's the stuff uh, at the, at the uh, parade, it's the stuff that the church does. Yeah. With the hate. Scientists said God hates fags. No. Or you're going to hell. All of this. And then I seen, because, you know, one, I'm going to tell you all the story about this, and then I'm going to move on. Me and my mama, come on, Neonopolis, you know the movie theater used to be down there? Maybe y'all too young, come on, that was ready. We, we was driving, and we couldn't figure out why we couldn't get downtown. And I was like, why are the streets blocked off? So we go and park at the Fitzgerald, because, you know, they had their own little parking spot. Under. So we went and park at the Fitzgerald, and we walked through, and I was like, oh, that's why. It's a colorful rainbows. And I was like, oh, we right in the middle of pride. I was like, we got to move swiftly. And then, so, we were standing there and the street was blocked off and there was this dude with a bullhorn. God hates fags and you're going to die and go to hell. And then, you know, people not paying attention. Some people cussing and throwing cups at the man and I immediately start to weep. And my mom was like, what's wrong with you? I said, something is wrong with that man. I said, there's no way that you can come out here and say that to, to, to the people. Come on, God loves people. He loves them. He don't love their sin, but he loves them. I said, each and every person out here deserves the love and grace of the Lord. Couldn't even really watch the movie right because this man done disturbed me to my core. He done forgot he was out there in the wilderness. He probably was gay back in the day or something. That's why he had no hate crime. Come on, standing there. And they had the little signs with the flames on them and stuff and said Jesus will never rescue homosexual. Come on, we can't do that, people. We can't do that. We do, this, we do the same thing in church. It's not just out there on the pride. I mean, you shouldn't even be out there, first of all. You shouldn't even be out there. They out there celebrating the drunk. That is not the time to minister to these people. It's not the time. But for you to be standing out there, you are a representation of Christ and you're standing on that pedestal. And they think that that's what God stands for. You're giving them a misbelief of who he is. Come on. And he's standing there just going at it with a bullhorn. People was dancing around and didn't care, but they was throwing cups and stuff too. And I was like, and my mama, my mama didn't understand. She didn't understand. How I felt about the situation, I explained it to her. She said, that's just wrong. I shook her head and we went on to our movie. But it changed my life because when I start seeing, when I saw that, I was just like, you can't treat, I don't care what people do. You can't treat people that way. You can't, you can't treat people that way. If, if we're going to treat the gays that way, we need to treat the murderers that way. Come on, if it's going to be like that, it's got to be an all-encompassing blanket. It's got to be everybody. But, but the thing about it is that the gay, the homosexual, the lesbian is, 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 is evident on you. We can see the mannerisms. We can see the way you change your face. We can see the way you change your... We can see. So we attack it because it's visible. And we don't stand on that. We don't stand on the things of the Lord. Proverbs 10 and 25 says, when the whirlwind passes by, 
The wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Come on, that's what I was looking for right there in the midst of the storm. Come on, he's going to blow away all the wickedness. He's going to blow away all the wicked people around. He's going to change your situation. But it says, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Come on, when you, when you stand on the Lord, come on, you're like concrete into his word and it's running all the way through you. Come on, in, in, in Ephesians 6, it says, put on the full armor of God. Come on, and it says, shot your, come on, shot your feet. Come on and prepare. Standing on the foundation. It don't matter what happens around you. It don't matter what happens in your life. When you stand on God. Yeah. When you stand on God. Come on, it says the righteous has an everlasting foundation. The righteous has an everlasting foundation. Come on, and I like the part where it says the wicked is no more. That means they've been destroyed. Yeah. Not just moved, destroyed. The wicked is no more. Proverbs 12 and 3. Almost done, oh God. Proverbs 12 and 3, it says, A man is not established by wickedness. But the root of righteousness cannot be moved. Come on, that's the same thing the other one said. Come on, what we was talking about, the roots. Come on, because roots get under the surface. Come on, we need under the surface prayer. We need under the surface prayer time. We need under the surface study time. Come on, because the wind, come on. How many know when, because I saw the other day when I was at work, the wind was blowing hard. And then a tree, an old tree that fell over. And I said, the roots wasn't secure. Come on. The roots wasn't secure. Can't stand, can't stand the storm. Come on. God is trying to give you the roots to stand the storm. Come on. Let me anchor you. Come on. How that song used to go back in the day? Anchor me, Lord. Come on. I'm old school. I don't care. Anchor me, Lord. Come on. I didn't know what that lady meant back then. But she was talking about, hold me in the midst of the storm. Come on. Because when the anchor is on a boat, come on, and the storm. The boat goes every which and way, but if I put the anchor on the Lord, I won't be moved. Come on, the Bible says that the, 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 the root of the righteousness can't be moved. It don't matter what storm goes on, but anchor me, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Anchor me in the gospel. Anchor me in your power. Anchor me in, in, in who you are. Because if I don't know who you are, then I can't be who I am. Yeah. Lord. And if you don't anchor me, God, oh, shut up. Come on, that song, do something to me. I don't even know the real words, but I just know that part. Anchor me, Lord. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Them saints sung some songs. It is. Them saints had a relationship with My God. Lord. Come on. We, we can't, oh, all this other stuff that we're doing nowadays, oh, shut up. But if you go back to the basics, anchor me. Come on, you don't even have to say nothing else. Anchor me, Lord. Anchor me in my finances. Anchor me in my, my ministry. Anchor me in your blood. Anchor me, God. Yeah, anchor me, God. I will not be satisfied until I'm anchored. Mm -hmm. And even then, I still stand on you. Oh, Come on, and what they were saying is if you anchor me, God, nothing that can happen in my life will shake me. Yeah. And that's why God says, I'm your comforter. I'm your healer. Not just my blood on Calvary went for sin, but it went for your mourning. Yeah. It went for your it went for your grief. It went for you. It went before you. Because I knew each and every situation that could come to your life. After all, I wrote your ending. Come on, we, we, fun, we sometimes forget about that too. After all, I wrote your ending. Oh, I wrote you into the man of God. I wrote you into the woman of God. I wrote you. Oh, The little stuff that happened to you, it just happened. It didn't just happen. It happened to shape you because I'm a perfect potter. I had to put some more water on that side because that side was too hard. So I had to shape it the way I wanted to. I had to take a little carving tool and cut the design that I wanted in you. Yeah. Maybe I had to place some gems on you. Maybe I had to paint you a different color because you was the wrong color in the first place. I'm a perfect potter. So everything that happened in your life is going to work for your good, I promise. You just got to stand. Come on. Standing sometimes is the hardest part because, come on, after you have stood for a long time, sometimes your legs get tired. Come on. You feel a little fatigued. But the Lord said, I am your strength. He said, I will move on your behalf. I will teach you how to stand. Come on. I'm going to even give you the right shoes to stand in. Come on. Somehow, you know, sometimes you, you got the wrong shoes on and you can't walk or stand. My feet hurt. God, take your shoes off. But I'm going to give you the right shoes to stand. 
stand to battle in. I'm going to give you the right clothes. I'm going to give you the right garments. I'm going to give you the right heart. Come on, that's what's wrong. We don't have the right heart. Yeah. Heart is corruptible. We don't believe that the, that the root of righteousness cannot be moved. How can we question the word? How can we challenge the word? It's his word. It's his word. Come on, 1 Peter 5. We're not going to go there, but I'm going to let you know. 1 Peter 5, read around 9, and James and 4. Come on, that's, that, that, that shows you how to stand when Satan comes to tempt you. But well, let's go there. Amen. Let's just go ahead and go there. 1 Peter 5 and 9. We thank you, Jesus. First Peter 5 and 9. I need you to stand. I need you to stand. How many want to stand for God? <clears throat> 9 says, resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brethren in the world. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go up there too. Come on, wait, therefore, I'm going to do Okay, let's do eight. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring. Oh, come on. Like a roaring lion. Come on, what your lion going to do against my lion? Like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Come on. So that lets you know he's just walking around, just looking. For you. Just looking. Can I do the denies of the day? Can I do the John today? Can I do the Derek? What can I do to Justin? What can I do? Come on, like a roaring lion. What's your lion gonna do against the lion, Jonah? Come on, but he says it right here. Resist him. That's it. That's There's it. always a way out. How many know? And, I, and I, I'm gonna need y'all to think about this real quick. When you plot the sin, come on, because we done all did it. You see the way out. You see the way out. Right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Right. We always see the way out. It's painfully obvious. Painfully. It's painfully obvious. But this right here, it says resist him. Resist him. Resist the temptation. Resist the other way. Come on, because we see the way. Come on, I know because I plot. I know I used to, I plot. Come on, you need, I'm a, I'm a strategical thinker. Come on. I set things up. I say certain things to make sure people do certain things. Come on, Come on you got to know. I can say something. I say they're either going to react this way or that way. And I'm ready for both. As soon as you act the way I don't want you to act, I'm going to pull you back to my path. Come on, I know what I'm doing here. Come on, so you know, you see the scope. Come on, we got to be smarter. Come on, we got to be smarter because we we, we, we we just go straight for the passion. Straight for the passion. Come on, and, and stay, resist the devil. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brothers in the world. Come on, now, you're not just the only one going through. You're not just the only one that's, get, that, that's getting seeped out by the lion. You're not just the only one getting devoured. Come on, because we get devoured. Come on, it says devour. Do we know what devour means? All right. Come on, God said last week that he has delivered us from the, 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 the power and consequences of sin. So how do we remain devoured yet still? It's because we see that prime opportunity to move and we just stand in the wrong thing. Come on, when you, when you, when you, a sinner, come on, I mean, because, you know, we still are. We got grace and we repent. But when you, when you want something, you know how to get it. Come on. And you can see the door open. Yeah. Where God says, don't do that. And you even examine the consequence. Come on. Mm -hmm. You examine the consequence of getting out of it. And you examine the consequence of getting into it. Come on. Well, God, I just, come on. This is where that line comes. Well, God, I just repent. Come on. Come on, I've done it before. I've done it lately. Come on. I'm being real. Each and every day, I fight my mind. Sometimes I don't. 
Come on. Yeah. You got to be real. That's what that's why a lot of preachers don't want to really get into this into this thing. Because they don't want to be real. They want to be holy. And when the Lord says it, and they be preaching the message like it ain't about them either. Speak you first. Preaching the message. Come on. Stand. Come on, I, Be vigilant. Why did why did he start the verse off first of all saying be sober? It didn't have nothing to do with no alcohol. That's just like what he said in the last scripture. Watch. Come on. Be sober. Be vigilant. Come on. This, these are all commas and then some, did some, did some, did some colas. Come on. Because your adversary, the devil, he's letting you know you need to pay attention. You need to watch don't be drunk with the ways of the world. Don't be drunk with the wave of the world. Be sober in your spirit. Because he coming for you. He's looking for you. So that he can devour you. Come on. That's, that's a warning that we don't take heed to. And it says, but, but if you go down to 10, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, perfect, established strength and settle you. Yes, sir. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So he said, regardless of what Satan is doing, come on, I just gave you a warning. I told you to be sober. I told you to be vigilant. I told you to pay attention. And he says, but God. God will establish you and give you strength and settle you. Come on with that. Settle his stand. Settle you and push you and put you in the position. Settle you in your spirit. Mm -hmm. So that you will be able to stand the wiles. Come on, the Ephesians 6 and 10 has the armor of God. It tells you to, to, to put on the breastplate of righteousness. It tells you to protect your mind with the helmet of salvation. Come on. It tells you to gird your loins with truth. Come on, that means keep that zipper closed. Come on, because we, we, we like to keep our zipper open. You Okay. Act like you don't. Prepare your feet. Come on, so that you can stand. So that you can stand. Come on, keep your old zipper closed. That's what's wrong with a lot of us now. Keep your zipper closed. Come on, loose. Ain't standing for nothing because you're laying down. Come on. I'm going to keep it 100. It's the, it's the truth. Got to get up and stand for something. Hallelujah. How many was blessed by the word today? Man. I can still go on. I got some other scriptures, but I'm going to hold on to them because I'm supposed to be teaching, right? Amen. For Bible study. I got a lot in me. God has been telling me some different things. Uh, that fast that we went on helped give me some clarity on some things. It helped open up some doors. It helped help me uh, see some different things. It helped me see me. That's the that was the main goal. It helped me see me. Come on, because you have to see you in order to stand. In order to do Christianity. Come on, we we, we don't want to believe in the church marketing. Jesus died. He rose. Who wants to be saved? I understand that, but you also have to have the real life aspect of it. You also have to have. When I leave here in a few minutes, if somebody cut me off, I'm not gonna cuss them out. Come on. You gotta go. Am I ready to fight somebody just because they just want to just run up on me? Come on. Am I ready to live foully? Come on. Or am I ready to walk in righteousness? Come on. Keeping my zipper closed. Come on. Am I ready to stand for who God has called me to be? Because if we're not ready to stand, then we will always be in the constant circle of dreamers. Come on. Because dreamers that don't stand for their dream, that don't stand for, for what's behind their dream, that don't stand for it, they, 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 they stay dreamers. And they just dream and dream and then they die and the dream dies with them. Come on, I was looking at the Rocks page the other day and he says, dreamers do. Dreamers do. He says, because if you have a dream, then you do your dream. And then he says, then you have fantasizers that don't. Fantasizers, they just fantasize. They never do the dream. But he said, dreamers do, and fantasizers don't. So don't get caught up in the fantasy of your dream. 
Get caught up in the work of the dream. Come on, because you know it's going to cost some work. Get caught up in the love of the dream. Come on, because if you if you no longer dream the same thing, then, 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 then something has changed in you. Especially if it's a dream from God. Come on, when I stopped believing in, in music, when I stopped believing in myself, it wasn't nothing wrong with the dream that God gave me. It was something wrong with me. We have to know that well, well, maybe I just changed it. No, you didn't change. You, you, you. Something happened to you that changed what your focus was. You got hit. You got deceived. You got sinful. You got lawless. You had just broken. Come on, I'm gonna keep there because this church likes to have sex. Oh. Period. I'm just gonna keep it 100. I know the deal. You have to. You have to. I know the deal. We gotta keep our zippers closed. Amen. Because we, we like it. Ain't nothing wrong with liking it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You're supposed to like it. That's what it's there for. You're supposed to like it. You're supposed to like it. But right now ain't your season for it. Amen? Put that, you know, with Beyonce, they put that ring on it. Why don't you put that ring on it? Go on and get that white dress. Then it's something different. But if we just lose, come on now, because I've been loose before. I know the deal. It's, 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 we, we got to be able to stand for something. Come on, the filling station, we need to stand. Because you got to think, how many people go to, to other churches and you hear a word like this? And I, I, I'm sorry, YouTube, you just going to have to listen to. How many go to other churches and you hear a word like this? I'm, I'm waiting. Oh, okay. So, so I mean, it's, it's a few, right? It's a few. But the majority, they talking about some foolishness. And they got a big old flock that like foolishness. So why do you think that they look at, looking at who we can imitate? Come on. Not just not, not a man. I'm talking about God. And the only way that we can find that is here. The only way we can find that is here. Yeah. The only way we can find that is here. We got to be able to stand on the word. But you got to know the word first. Come on, even if it's just five minutes a day. Come on, that's how I start that. Five minutes a day. Some days it'd be rough. Don't beat yourself up because you didn't get it in that day. Just pick it back up. Don't go weeks and days without getting in the word. Don't go weeks and days without praying. Come on, that's what, what that's where we get distant from God and then we come up in here and can't break through like the service. I love y'all, I really do. We need to stand. Come on, don't y'all want to be uh, chilling in the Bahamas for the church vacation. Come on, y'all not yes. ready. Come on. We got the dream not just for us, but dream for the church. Come on. I, I, I dream of giving fifteen and twenty thousand dollar offerings. Me too. That's what I dream of. To support the body. You know what I told God? I told him I said May, I want to make enough money to bless people. I said all the rest of the stuff can come and go. Yes, I do want a Lamborghini. Yes, I do want a Porsche. That's just my, I've always, ever since I was little, that don't have nothing to do with me being saved. That was just a dream. What I, I want that. So we, we, we sometimes get that mixed up. But I told God, I said, you know, I want money to bless people. I want to be able to just go up to somebody and say, here's a car. Come on. That's, that's, that's kingdom work. I want to be able to go up to somebody and say, I know that your house, that, you, that your rent is, is past due. Let me buy your house for you. Come on. That's what, that's what I want to do for the kingdom. That's what's in my heart. I said, God, give me enough money to bless people. To change their lives and know that you did it, not me. Come on, because when you give somebody a house, that's crazy to the modern world. So it's got to be something miraculous. Come on. That's what dream. Come on, we got to get back to our dream. So if we're giving that away to other people, imagine what we give it to this nation. Imagine what we're giving to the station. And we have been afforded the opportunity, people. We have been afforded the opportunity. We just got to stand. We just got to get in this word and we got to read. We got we to gotta know who God is. That's the main point. Know who God is. Because if you know who God is, you will never go in the wrong direction.
We encourage you to continue to tune in regularly. And if you are in the Las Vegas Valley, join us at the YMCA located at 4141 Meadows Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89107. Meet us there every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. As well, like us on Facebook and tune in to our podcast on our Heart Radio. If you are in need of special prayer, please email us at thefillingstationlv at gmail.com. We will be glad to labor with you until God offers a resolve. You can also sow a seed into this ministry by giving online through PayPal. Sow all seeds to thefillingstationlv at gmail.com. Expect a harvest. Be blessed.